Hi there, Jamie here today at Teachers Tech. Hope you're having a great day today. Today, I wanna to show you two different ways that you can create group emails in Gmail. Now, what I mean by this is you can just simply go up where you're gonna write to, and rather than typing all the different names in, you can create a group, and then you can just type, type in the name of the group and everybody will be in it, you just click on it. Now, like I said, there's two different ways we can do this. This is one way, now a different way, would be like this, creating another group and all the people inside that group will be part of it. So these are the two different ways I wanna show you. They have their each have their own benefits and you'll have to decide what works best for you. But that's what I wanna show you today on Teachers Tech. So the first way that I want to show you is using contacts and I'm just using a free Gmail account. It's not uh, my work or uh, business one that I'm using. This is just a free demo one that I've created. I'm going to go up to contacts in the app launcher right up top. It looks like the waffle right here and I'm going to open up contacts and if you haven't used contacts before, uh, maybe some of you might have automatically populated them. Sometimes they're connected to the phone. I've just put a couple example contacts uh, one in. If I wanted to add any more to it, I could go and just hit create contact. I can create multiple contacts. I can actually import contacts in here so you can see if you actually have that CSV uh, or the V card, you can upload it in there. So, but I'm not going to do that. Uh, again, if I wanted to add just a single one very quickly, I am just going to uh, call it, give it a fake one here and I'm going to give it a different email of my teacher's tech that I have just like that. And I'm just going to hit save. I'm not going to worry about saving all that other information. And I'm going to go to contacts and now you can see I have three different ones there. So what you need to do with your contacts is put them in a label. It used to be called groups a long time ago, but now you're going to create a label. And how you can do this is there's a few different ways, but the way I'm going to show you is if you go down your list and select the contacts that you'll know you'll want in your label, if you select them, you just have to manage labels right here and then go ahead and create a label. Now for this one, I'm just gonna keep this very simple. I'm just gonna call this example uh, group here, just like that example group and hit save. And you'll see on the left-hand side, I have this example group. I can edit it if I wanted to edit the name, rename the label or delete it from here too. But right now I'm just gonna go back to my email. So back to Gmail. I guess I already had that open. I didn't have to go back up there. But if I just go and compose the message right now and I start typing example, there's my example group that with the three members. So I just select it and you can see all three are there and I could send them a message and I'm just gonna go test, test and send just like that. But let's say if you don't want people to see each other's emails, you've got to remember to BCC them. So if I go to compose, and click BCC here and then type the group in. So I start typing example group and then I'm gonna go test two and I'll show you the difference between them and then I'm just gonna go uh, send. So what I'm gonna do is jump over to one of those other emails and just show you what the difference is when it came through. So I'm over at one of the demo accounts that I have here and you can see the two emails that I received. And if I click on the first one, here's my test. And I can see here, if I drop down the people that were in that email list. And a lot of times you don't want that. So this is why it's important to remember the BCC. So if I click on this one and you can see that it's BCC, I drop down and you can't see anybody else's email except for the person that whose account you're in. So remember the importance of the BCC. Now, uh, that's a pretty quick way to create, create a group email. But one thing with this is you can't share that email. That email is connected to your contact list. Uh, it's not something that somebody else can be using. It's just from your account. The other way I want to show you is creating a group inside Google Groups and then using the email from there because that one gives you a lot more things that you can do with it, especially working in a collaborative group and sharing the email and sending out. So I have two different emails open here, Gmail accounts, just to show you something quickly. This one right here is uh, part of my organization and this one over here is just a free Gmail account that I created. And I mentioned that we're using Google Groups. And when we use, uh, if we're part of an organization or work, 
uh, and I'm just going to maximize this one and I go up to the app launcher, usually you're going to see groups right inside of this. And when we go ahead and use it, uh, some of these things, if you're part of an organization, you might have to ask your tech admin to turn certain things on. They might not want you creating groups uh, on this. So just so you know that uh, if you are trying to follow along and it doesn't let you, that could be the issue. If I go over to my free one and go up to the app launcher, because I want to show that this can be done on a free Gmail account too, and start looking for it, you're not going to find it, but you can still get to it. So if I just scroll down and go to more from Google here, uh, and then just scroll down a little bit and browse all products right here, and you can see all the different Google products here. Uh, if I keep going down, we have, oh, there it is right here, Google Groups. So I can go ahead and click on it. And now I'm in Groups. So I want to point out, if you look at the, uh, the address up here, groups.google.com, if you're logged in, you could have just typed that in. I just wanted to show you uh, that where to find it in the app launcher as well. So we have our Google Groups open, so we can op now at this point, we can go ahead and create a Google Group. And to do this, we can just see in the top left here, it says create a group. So the tricky part here now is finding a group name that's not already taken. So if I, if for an example, if I type example, and then go down and I could write something description, but if I just hit next, this email is already taken. Because when I create the group, I'm gonna be creating an email based on this. So let's try something else. I'm gonna, for this example, creating example group. And sometimes what you can do is maybe even add some numbers like this. So creating example group 01, and I'm just gonna leave it like this. This is just a demo. I might not have to type all that, but I'm gonna go at this. I can just, uh, this is, would be my uh, info here of the group and hit next. So at this point, you this is where you can pick uh, the, the settings. And this is important how you pick this. Who can search for this group? So I would, I'm only going to keep this for group members. I don't want anybody on the web uh, finding this. Who can join this group? So anyone, uh, only invited users, anyone who can ask, anyone can join. Well, this is a group just, let's say, for your own need. And you only want invited users. Who can view conversations? So group members, group managers, group owners. Uh, you would pick on those uh, pick and you can change these later on inside group properties. So I'm going to go ahead and just hit next on this. Uh, now at this point, I can send invitations to people. So I have two different ways and I'll just toggle this. So directly add. So I could directly add group members or send invites to them. So it, depending on which way you want to do, uh, and I can, you can see if there's group managers, I could add them to each, to each each of them and then send them in. Or if I can go back to the bottom, toggle back, and this will give the invite that they have to click. So for this case, I'm just gonna do, uh, I'm gonna type in one of my demo accounts here and send, and, and then so at this point, it's gonna create the group. I could just give a message. So I'll just say hello and create group. And I'm not a robot and create group. So I only have one person in there, so that's not a very good group. I just wanted to show you that you can still uh, go and add more people to this group too. So I'm gonna to go to group, and if we look, and I'm gonna go, you can see here it is, create an example of group 01 here. Uh, if I go from people to members, uh, I just have uh, nobody in there at this time because I didn't accept anything. So I'm gonna quickly go to this email here, and you can see I just have a lot of junk in this email. I'm gonna refresh it and I'm gonna click on it. This is the email, that the invitation that I just got. Remember, I could have directly added them to on it. So creating a group invited you uh, and I can just accept this invitation here. So once I'm accepted in here, I'll be able to go back to the group uh, here that I have. And I'm just gonna refresh this and you're gonna see that now I have one person here. I can still add members to this group. So if I was gonna go add members, uh, this time it's gonna be, uh, I'm gonna add this demo right here. And I'm not, actually this time I'm gonna cancel that. I'm gonna add members and I'll do it the other way. And I'm just gonna, this time I could give a group manager. So it will be this right here. And I could add other people, but I'm not going to. And I'm just gonna hit add. I'm not a robot and add members. And so if you're the owner, you'll be able to delete people. You can see if you go through how you can uh, have, you can change things around. So if I click on this to, uh, if you look, 
uh, I could uh, remove member at this point, but I'm the owner, so I'm not going to take away that. Uh, ban member on it, just some things to point out. It's pretty easy to add new members like I showed you, but as soon as you click uh, all the different things, you can change the role. So in this case, uh, this was a member. I can just drop down and change them here. So, e you know, each email, digest, all these different things that you can change. Now, this takes a few moments, but I'm just going to... Uh, go and copy this just so I have it in here so I don't have to remember what I'm typing. But what you can do now, here is a couple of different ways you can have a conversation. We could do a new conversation through here. So if I hit new conversation and you can see it kind of looks like Gmail, it's gonna send it to this, this right here. And I'm just gonna say hello test on it. And I'll just say hello. So this will send out. And if I'm gonna go and post message here, uh, now, at this point, what's going to happen is uh, you're going to see different messages. If I go up to conversation, you can see it right here. But now what I'm going to do so I could look at it. And so this is the conversation I could work right in the groups. If I go here and I'm going to go back to this uh, email here and go to my in inbox, you can see I got an email in the Gmail too. So the same message is here. The person could unsubscribe from this. Uh, but now, what well, the good thing is at this point, I don't even have to actually go from uh, the email anymore or from the group. I can actually just send an email. So what I mean is if I go uh, and take a look at this, if I just drop down, you can see here is the email right here. So if I send an email out, I'm just going to copy this. I could send out an email, paste it over like this and send out a message like this. So if I just was sending out a test mes message, I could send it out and it's go to go to everybody in the group. So if I jump over to another account back in the email, you can see there's the one I just sent, shows me who it came from. I can't see anybody else's emails because it's just that group that's created in here. So that becomes an email of whoever's in that. If I go over to the other account inside, this has actually come up inside the groups and I can take a look at it here also. So I can reply in here. So it's kind of the conversation can happen in groups and it can happen in the email. So this is a great way because then you can add more people to the group. So if I was going to go, uh, you can also check out all the groups you joined here. But then if I go ahead into these groups, uh, then look at the people down here. This is where you can check uh, if you needed to remove people because sometimes in groups, people come and go. And this is where you can add your members or take them out or give them different roles. So if this group could, if someone's leaving who's the owner and you still want this group to exist, you could move that role. The owner could move that role over to somebody else. So if I switch over to one of the other accounts here that didn't create it. So this account is the one where I created the group. But if I just jump over uh, to a different one and then I'm going to go up to groups, this is part of my organization one. And you can see I have groups right here. You'd be able to see I'm part of this group. It's an external group, but it's here. And I'm going to click on it. Uh, and it shows me who's in this group, the other people in here. Uh, if I go to people, uh, and then depending on what my uh, what I could do, uh, this is where I would uh, put the different th put more people and different things in here, depending on what privileges I have. So I hope you like this walkthrough of two different ways to create these groups, uh, email groups for Gmail. Let me know what you think down below uh, in the comments if this is working for you or not. Thanks for watching this time on Teachers Tech. I'll see you next time with more tech tips and tutorials.